All right, hey guys, Dr. Adil here. As you guys know, I'm a regenerative sports medicine expert, and what that means is we specialize in treating chronic inflammation and injuries and pain. So one of the most common conditions we see is osteoarthritis. So what is osteoarthritis? Most of you have probably heard that it's a wear and tear condition, but the reality is we know now in the last few years, it's not just wear and tear, so it's not just aging, but it's actually an inflammatory condition. So what that means is there's chronic inflammation in the joint that causes degradation of the cartilage. And cartilage is a cushiony substance that lines the bone and think of it like a shock absorber so it doesn't wear out your joints. But unfortunately what happens in some people is that cartilage wears out and it causes inflammation and that, that inflammation causes pain. The key takeaway to understand from that is that osteoarthritis is not just a wear and tear condition, but it's actually a condition that disturbs cellular signaling. So the cellular signaling changes from anabolic to catabolic. So what that means is there's more destruction of the joint over time and not as many growth factors to stimulate healing. And so over time, there's degeneration of the cartilage or the cushiony substance that protect your bone. And then when that wears out, eventually you get what's called bone on bone and, th and then you get chronic inflammation and that's what causes pain. So now that you understand that part of the reason is chronic inflammation, of course, one of the things you can do to prevent it is an anti-inflammatory diet. I made a YouTube video talking about how to use nutrition to reduce inflammation in your body. So see that video because it's very difficult to make a catered nutritional plan. You, you have to specify it or customize it for your body. And there's ways to do that using blood work and working with a nutritionist. So see my video to see how to do that. And the other important thing is exercise. So muscle is actually protective for your joints, but the muscle, <clears throat> But exercise is kind of like a double-edged sword. So if you do too much, it can destroy the joints, but if you do too little, then there's not enough muscle to protect the joints. So this is where periodized training comes into play and having a good coach or trainer to program your exercise regime so that you know how to progress in a safe way at the same time protecting your joints and building muscle. The other thing I often talk about is supplements because there are a lot of supplements that can help to reduce the progression of osteoarthritis or even prevent it and possibly treat it once you do develop it. So there's a few that I recommend for osteoarthritis. One, of course, is omega-3 fish oil because it's a strong anti-inflammatory. Most people, we recommend doing about one tablespoon a day, which is a sufficient dose. And again, along those lines, you wanna make sure your vitamin D3 levels are sufficient. So you wanna make sure they're in the middle range or upper two thirds. There's also another supplement on the market that's quite anti-inflammatory called avocado soy unsoftenables. And so what that is, is ASU for short. And essentially what it does is it takes a natural avocado that we all eat and takes the substances that are beneficial for your health and puts them into a pill form. And that can actually help to reduce inflammation and has been shown to help with osteoarthritis pain and symptom. And then one more anti-inflammatory supplement that's great is curcumin. So curcumin has actually been compared to ibuprofen or Advil in head-to-head -head trials and been shown to be just as effective for reducing osteoarthritis pain. So it can actually reduce inflammation and pain and have none of the side effects that anti-inflammatories have. We all know anti-inflammatories can cause problems for heart, kidney, and so it's not something you wanna take on a long-term basis. So this is a great alternative for that. The other supplement that's been shown to have promise for osteoarthritis is N-acetylcysteine. The reason for that is it's an antioxidant and may promote, again, an anti-inflammatory effect and possibly reducing wear and tear over time. A lot of people ask about glucosamine. Glucosamine has mixed evidence. For the most part, it's pretty inert and doesn't really do much. So I'm not a huge fan of it, but there is something called ultimate glucosamine, which is a powder form, uh, which has better bioavailability and has been shown to be effective for treating symptoms of OA. So if you're gonna take glucosamine, just take a powder form, not the pill form. All right, so now we can talk about what we specialize in, which is the treatment of osteoarthritis. So conventionally speaking, most doctors will treat it with what's called a cortisone injection. Unfortunately, cortisone injections can cause wear and tear of cartilage, and even one injection of cortisone can make arthritis worse. So it's kind of weird that we're using something that reduces inflammation, but may actually make arthritis worse. So you don't want to do any harm, and so I'm not a huge fan of injecting cortisone to joints. One injection may be okay, but it's not something you want to do on a repeat basis. So a lot of times, if cortisone doesn't work, the next step is what's called hyaluronic acid or collagen injections. So collagen injections work because, as we said earlier, the cartilage is almost like a cushiony collagen substance, and one of the molecules that makes it up is hyaluronic acid. So we just inject this back into the joint to help lubricate the area, and it helps to reduce inflammation and creates a sort of a buffer. Now, sometimes the collagen injections aren't sufficient, and so then this is where we come in with our regenerative interventions. So you'll see today in the video that we're injecting Jay Stevens, who's a well-known bodybuilder, and he has mild chondromalacia, which is kind of early stage osteoarthritis or early stage wear and tear of the cartilage. 
And because of that, he also has inflammation. We treated his other knee earlier and his other knee is doing great. And now he wanted to get his other knee done because he's having similar type of symptoms. And what we used to order it was the platelet-rich plasma injections. So platelet-rich plasma injections can treat mild to moderate osteoarthritis. And the way it works is that we take your blood, we spin it, and then we concentrate the plasma. And when we concentrate it, it increases the platelet count. And platelets are basically little growth factors that help with healing and reducing inflammation. And so there's different ways to process it. So not all PRP is the same. And I think that's really what people need to understand is that there's different types of PRP injections. So we use different ones and we have one where we process it so it's more anti-inflammatory so that it works for osteoarthritis better. Yeah, but basically we just use the ultrasound to make sure that we're going right into the joint space. And then also to make sure there's no blood vessel, no scar tissue in the way. You can do it without ultrasound too. I mean, it's pretty accurate either way, but it's more just 100% accuracy and then also ensuring you're not gonna hit any other structures on the way. Uh, and the only way to know that is if you're using image guidance. One, two, three, three, okay. How you doing? Great. Yeah, it's funny, everyone always comments, they're like, oh, that must hurt so much. <laughs> It's a lot of pressure. The, dis the main discomfort is, yeah, when you're like injecting uh, all of yeah. the fluid into the knee itself. Yeah, the exactly. needle doesn't yeah. really hurt much. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Cool. The key with the platelet-rich plasma injections is there's different types and there's also different techniques. So for example, if you have more severe osteoarthritis, like the bone on bone we we're talking about, or if you have inflammation in the bone, you can actually do something called intraosseous plasma injection. I was the first doctor in Canada to do this. So we actually have a website, uh, Pain360, if you wanna see the video of it. And we inject the plasma right into the bone. So this can actually help people prevent from getting joint replacement. And I've had many patients who haven't had to do knee or hip surgery because the injection worked. Of course, it doesn't work for everyone, but it's an alternative where people may not want to do surgery or may not be candid. So at least it gives them an option. And a lot of people ask me about stem cell injections. Stem cell injections actually aren't allowed in Canada. In the States, there is a lot of people doing them and they can be effective for osteoarthritis. The problem is with stem cell injections, they're really just anti-inflammatory injections because you're not actually culturing or growing the stem cells. So they're not, they're not regrowing tissue. That's what people need to understand. Unless you go to Panama or Mexico where they culture it for a couple of weeks and they implant it using a 3D bioprinter and you know doing all sorts of scaffolds and then you can actually regenerate the tissue. Otherwise, you're just kind of reducing inflammation, which the plasma, especially the new generation plasma called Cytorich can do on its own. So Cytorich plasma injection is just as effective as stem cell injections in the States. And that's a common thing people often ask me about. Um, and, and of course, we talked about it, there's obviously joint replacement. A, a lot of people don't like the idea of getting their joint replaced and it's starting to fall out of favor I find with a lot of patients because they want minimally invasive approaches. And of course, there's a lot more risk with it. There's in Canada, there's long wait times. All right guys, so everything went well with the procedure. So what we did today was we used platelet-rich plasma injection to treat early stages of osteoarthritis. So this is a great way to prevent it from getting worse and also to help treat the symptoms so people can get back to doing what they love. So hopefully you guys learned about all the different options and how to treat this from a non-surgical perspective. And if you liked the video, please like it and please subscribe and comment too. It really helps the algorithm and I'm just trying to you know, share as much information with people as possible. So really appreciate it.